so that we would we can know that we want to hear from you. Lord, we want to hear from you today, Lord. We need to hear from you today, Lord. And so please speak to our hearts in a powerful way this evening. Thank you. Bless Pastor Rick as he preaches the word tonight. And we pray that you would bless us all the Lord.
people that you know God has put on your heart to pray for. You know, there's people in your life that I don't even know that God wants you to pray for that myself, Pastor, will never know, will never be able to minister to. They won't step into this building, but you know them, and you should be praying for them. So number one is the recipients of your prayers, okay? The recipients of your prayers. Jesus said that he prays for those that are his. If you're, uh, we'll go back into our text. It says in verse... 10, or sorry, verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. Look at that. Thou hast given me. Man, that touched my heart when I was reading that in my devotion time. And God just spoke to me. You need to pray for the people that I put you uh, responsible for. Number one, I thought, uh, was pray for those that God has entrusted to you. Okay, uh, God has entrusted you with certain people, whether it's your family or whether it's just people that are in your life. You know, God has entrusted those people to you to pray for them. God gave Jesus the 12 disciples, and he had many other disciples, but he had a group of 12 that he worked with, and then he had a core group of three, and he prayed for them. He said to Peter, I have prayed for you. You know, who are you praying for? There's people in your life that God has entrusted to you that you need to pray for. Uh, number one, again, you don't have all the sub points, but you can go ahead and write different ones down. Number one for me was family. Family is the most important thing. And, you know, they talk about Bible college that your first ministry is your family. You know, your family should be prayed for daily. You know, I have a different list that I pray for each and every day, or I have a different, you know, something when I, you know, take time to pray and I talk to God. But there's some things that I don't pray for every day that God kind of brings up every once in a while. And, but family is one thing that you need to pray for. Every single day. Your family is most important. Uh, under family, I thought of spouse. Uh, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. Again, I didn't even think of, you know, right after the couple's retreat. But 1 Peter chapter 3, pray for your spouse. 1 Peter chapter 3 in verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 6 says, Even so Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughter ye are, and as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement, likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and being heirs together of the grace of life. Now listen to this, that your prayers be not hindered. You know, if you have a bad relationship with a spouse or a family member, your prayers may be hindered. You know, it, it'll stop God from hearing you or answering your prayers if you don't get along or treat your wife or husband correctly and biblically. You know, I, I heard this, I think it was two years ago at the couple's retreat, and it hit me, and man, that's, that's a pretty life-changing verse as a husband or as a wife, is that God expects you to treat them biblically uh, to answer your prayers. You know, I was in Bible college, we had a class, uh, the name of the class was Christian Family. Of, of Pastor Higgins taught the class. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. And he was the funniest guy I've ever met. And man, sometimes we wouldn't get anything done. We would just laugh the whole class. But he was great. He was a funny guy. But he was a very spiritual man. It was, you know, most of the men in that class was an all boys, uh, an all men class. And you know, it was probably most of our favorite class. And the one thing he said, he didn't say many things. He said, I want to forget. But there's some things that are, you know, very spiritual. Again, it was a great balance. Uh, he said, listen to this, he said, it takes me a long time to pray for my family. You know, it wasn't a thing that, oh, God bless this person and my wife and my children, amen. No, it, it's, he's specific about it. He said, hey, uh, I want this thing done in my husband's wife. I want this thing done in my children's wife. I want them uh, fill in the blank. I know you all have probably burdens and desires for your family. Pray about that to God. It shouldn't be a quick thing. It, you know, it's worth it. You, you know, we talk about what is worth to you, your your prayer time, talking to God, but is your family worth it enough to pray for them? So pray for your family, pray for your spouse, pray for those that you're investing in. Again, these are just some points. You can go ahead and write these down if you want, but I'm just going to list them. You can list some more things in there that people that God is putting on your heart to pray for, but you ought to be investing in other people. Uh, they used to say it all the time. At Bible college, that every Paul needs a Timothy, and every Timothy needs a Paul. You need to have somebody you're investing in, and that uh, you should be looking up to somebody as a mentor. Realize that you should be praying for that next generation. And I hope it uh, bless your heart. Bless my heart. Last week, we had the, the, some teens come up and give a testimony, and I, you know, I'm very uh, proud of them, and I love them, and I, I'm thankful for them. Kind of, you know, both of them pretty new to the youth group. And it's just God is doing an amazing work in their life. And I had a, a team come up to me last week and, and talked about the, uh, we, I encouraged them that God will speak to them. I, I talked about reading your Bible, how God speaks to 
to you through your word. And then study hall came, came up to me and goes, hey, I read uh, Genesis chapter 1 through 5 last night, and I have all these questions. And it was an amazing thing that I got to talk to him and show him all these. And I tried to get some of some of his questions were good. But I, I gave him the answers I could, and it was amazing thing that God spoke to him, and he, and he was excited about it. Hey, God put on my heart, hey, you need to add him to the prayer list and ha have a list of teams that you're praying for, a list of people younger than you that you are investing in that you're praying for. They need that. They're not going to do it on their own. And, and, and some of these teams, nobody prays for them. And that's a sad thing. And I, I talk about it in our teacher orientation. A lot of the students that we have at the school that aren't saved, that don't even have parents praying for them. You know, it used to be, you know, Christians, and, uh, the parents were, you know, maybe not churchgoers, but they believed in God. And uh, the grandparents were definitely praying for them. But now you have teens that are growing up with no spiritual influence and nobody's praying for them. So I encourage you to find somebody to invest and ask God to show you somebody that you can pray for. Uh, not only your family and your spouse and the people you're investing in, but also your church. You know, your church needs prayers. Your pastoral staff needs your prayers. And uh, you should be praying for your pastor. You should be praying for him and his wife and, and just for the church in general. There's different church people uh, that need your prayers. And obviously we have a prayer list for that, and that's great. But, but God will put different things on your heart. You gotta, under that, you can put friends and neighbors and a whole list of people that you need to pray for. And again, it's anybody that God puts on your heart. And I hope throughout you know, this message that God will put people on your heart to pray for. So not only did Jesus pray for those he was entrusted with, but he prayed for the unsaved. If you look in uh, John chapter 17, our text chapter, John chapter 17 and verse 19. He said, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. He says, I'm not just praying for those, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. You know, we heard a lot about soul winning, about believing on Jesus this morning. You know, you should be praying for people that are unsaved. Uh, uh, turn with me to go to Colossians chapter 4. This is a great verse. You say, well, how do I pray for them? I don't even know. Uh, you know who they are. I don't know, you know, where they are or what I should pray for them. Don't just pray generally that, oh Lord, help people to get saved. No, look at verse uh, Colossians chapter four and verse two. Continue in prayer and watch, and the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So what are you praying for? You're praying for opportunity to preach the gospel to the unsaved. You know, a lot of times you pray, oh, well, Lord, if it be your will, answer this. You know, that's kind of like a, uh, uh, some people will say that's a lack of faith. And, you know, the Bible says pray in God's will. Some things you don't know if they're God's will or not. But I guarantee you, it is God's will for you to share the gospel with the unsaved. So if you pray that, God, give me an opportunity. Give me a door of utterance. He is going to answer it. There's no doubt about it. It is God's will for you to preach to the unsaved. You know, give me an opportunity for my family member. Give me an opportunity for my neighbor, my coworker, just anybody that I see. Help me pray for it. Pray for an opportunity to share the gospel with them. But then take it. You know, many times I've prayed for it, and it was clear as day, God, that, you know, somebody's in front of me, and they're willing to hear the gospel, and we don't give it to them. So pray for it, but then take the opportunity uh, to spread the gospel. And pray for, as the verse continues to say, that I may know how I ought to speak. You say, oh, well, I don't know what to say. Ask God to help you. God said, I'll give you anything that you ask if it's his will, and it's his will that you preach the gospel. So pray for the unsaved. Pray for a door of utterance. However that long it takes, pray and ask God to help you to reach the unsaved. And the letter C here is pray for yourself. You say, that's a weird point on a message entitled praying for others. But in reality, you can pray for yourself. You know, somebody's got to do it. And you have problems and you have situations, you have struggles that you're dealing with. It is okay to pray for yourself. Look at 1 Peter, one of the, a great verse in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 5. And verse 7, it says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. It doesn't say casting all other people's cares. Yes, you should pray for other people. That's obviously the point of the message. But you can pray for yourself. You know, God is interested in you. You know, that's an amazing thing uh, 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 that God wants to hear your request. You know, you know Carrie's not old enough yet to ask for things, which is great. But sometimes she does. She wants her water, and she 
you know, very loud about it. And sometimes she wants things that she can't have, uh, like my phone. She loves to take it and then give it to me, but obviously sometimes she'll run away with it. And she's asking and asking and asking, and sometimes it gets to the point where you just want to give it to them. Uh, but think about it. Sometimes I don't want to hear it. I'm like, Spirit, leave me alone. I'm trying to do something. Or, you know, uh, you can't have that for the hundredth time. But God never gets tired of you asking him for your cares. It may be a small thing. It may be a big thing. But God never gets tired of you praying and asking for different things. So God cares about you. Be confident in that. God has never done anything to take that away from you. You know, sometimes people mess up. People will break promises. And you'll say, man, does this person really care about me? God has never done that to you. God has never wronged you. God has never broken a promise or, or not answered a prayer. So realize God cares about you. God is interested in your prayers. But don't pray selfishly. This isn't, oh, God can do this. God can do that. You know, I want to be awesome today. You know, no, you're asking God for things that are in his will. So pray for God to use you. So pray for yourself. Pray for things that you need. Pray for others. Again, that's the message tonight. I hope you're thinking about somebody that you can pray for. Pray for unsafe people. I know every one of us, if I said raise your hand, you have an unsafe family member. You know, have somebody we know that we should be praying for, we are praying for, uh, to get saved. And just going back to that, uh, when we had the bus ministry, I remember there was a girl, I won't say her name, but she was about seven or eight years old, and she would come pretty regularly, and she came, uh, you know, from not the best situation. She was living with her aunt, and God put it on my heart to pray for her to get saved, and I knew she wasn't saved, and Eventually, it got to the point where I was praying and praying, and it, it, where God said, I want you to fast for her. And, and if you look at me, I don't do much fasting, and it's not my favorite thing about Christianity. But I did. I took a day, and I said, God, I'm going to pray for this little girl that she gets saved. And I, I think it was on BBS, uh, BBS, or one Sunday, she came to me, and, and you know, she was all excited. She goes, oh, I got saved. It was amazing. And, it was, and God answered that prayer request because God put it on my heart to pray for that little girl, and she got saved. But that was pretty quick. I think it was maybe a year, right? Not even. And God answered. Maybe she got saved, but I, I think of my mom who prayed for her mom for over 20 years to get saved. And she, man, she prayed and prayed, and she'd bring her, you know, the Bible, and every, I felt like she was giving her Bible every other birthday, and she would write her letters, and why? Because she wanted her mom to get saved. And I remember she eventually did get saved, and then she went to the prayer band, and it was just an amazing thing. Why? Because she didn't stop praying. And there may be some in your life that you may have stopped praying for. You say, oh, well, they're not going to get saved. They don't even talk to me anymore. They don't even like me. Realize God can still do a work in their heart. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. God is not going to stop working. So pray for others. Pray for yourself. Pray for unsaved. But also, what is the purpose of your prayer? The purpose of your prayer. Think about it. Why do you pray? You say, oh, well, I want, I want to talk to God. I want to do different things. I want to be spiritual. I'm supposed to pray. What do you mean, why do I pray? Well, why do you pray for other people? What is your motivation behind it? What's the purpose? The purpose of prayer is for God to get involved. It's for God to be glorified. So if you're praying for other people, realize your prayer should be specific enough that God receives the glory. You know, God do this or God do that. Pray for somebody. Don't just pray, oh, well, this person's traveling. I hope they're saying, but I'm, you know, pray, oh, well, this person needs this. Help them. No, you're praying that God will show up in a miraculous way, that they'll know it was God, and they'll know somebody's praying for them. Realize that you know, when people need something, they'll go to somebody they know is going to pray for them. They're not going to ask you if they've never seen you pray or if they've never heard you talk about God or if they know you don't pray, especially family members they know most about us. Realize that you'll be known as somebody who prays. Uh, be specific in what you pray for. So what do we pray for? Letter A here is physical need. Now uh, turn with me, if you will, to James chapter 5. A lot of times we'll read James 5, 16, but we're going to back it up and read James 5, 15. James 5, 15, a physical need, talking about a health need. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he commit a sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that he may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And obviously, you know, I mentioned my mom earlier, not everybody gets healed. And we know that, but it's in God's will to heal and, and to work miracles and do things that are miraculous. You know, some people don't get healed until they get to heaven. And that's an amazing thing that uh, I heard the quote that, you know, heaven heals all illness. And that's the truth that if you're saved, 
you're in heaven that God does heal you, but sometimes God's going to heal on this earth, and you may be here dealing with a physical need, or you may be here, you know somebody who has cancer, you know somebody who has a physical ailment that the doctors don't really have an answer for. Realize God created them, God knows, and God does have the answer, you need to pray and ask God, you know, to give the doctors wisdom. You know, we pray for that, that's not just something we say, uh, they are wiser than us, we're just common people, and they've been studying it for years. You can pray and say, God, show them something, give them wisdom, help them. To understand the problem, help them to uh, diagnose the problem. Uh, realize that God does do the healing. But you have to be fervent, you have to be passionate about it. It says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Well, that means the opposite is true that a lazy, apathetic, boring prayer probably doesn't get much done. The Bible says, Effectual, fervent prayer availeth much. Realize that when you're praying to God, you're praying to God. You're not just talking to a friend. You're not just talking to some man upstairs. You're talking to God Almighty. And that ought to light a fire in you that you're excited about it, that you get to talk to God. In Ephesians, I think chapter 4 talks about you have access to the Holy One. You have access to God. You know, a lot of people, they go to these different sporting events, and man, we want access to meet the team, and we're going to see this famous person. It's going to be the greatest day of my life. Well, realize you get to talk to God every day. You have that VIP access to the Almighty. You know, when he tore the, the veil, tore it in and you have that direct access because of what Jesus did for you. Don't ever get over it. Don't get used to it. It's the most amazing thing about being a Christian in the church age is that you have direct access to God. Amen. So be passionate about it. You are talking to God. It's not, no, maybe he heard you today, maybe he didn't. You're talking to the Lord. So there's physical needs. Be passionate about it. Let it be. There's spiritual needs. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, Paul had a prayer life and he prayed for people's spiritual needs. He says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now that ought to be your heart's desire and your prayer and your, that you can't get enough of praying for people to get saved. And it may take you to pray and pray to the point where you get to lead somebody to the Lord. And I promise you, once you do that, uh, you'll never get over it. It'll be the greatest thing in your life. And you see that person bow their head and get saved, uh, you'll want more. You'll pray and pray for spiritual needs. So number one is salvation. I didn't put these on there, but if you'd like, you can write them down. A spiritual need is salvation. Pray for people uh, to get saved. But also number two is restoration. You know, you think of the prodigal son. Man, somebody is praying for people to come back to God. You say, oh, I know they're saved, or I think they're saved, but they're out of church, or they're in and out of church, and they're not really dedicated to the Lord. Uh, pray for those people. Pray for people to get back uh, with the Lord. Uh, prayer, sorry, pray for people to get closer to God. I have, you know, I had a prayer list, uh, uh, and most of my prayer list says, you know, pray for this person to get closer to God. Pray for this, you know, I start with myself, uh, but pray for people to get closer to God. I, again, I remember my uh, my mom, one night, we were sitting around our table, and it's funny, after the, the um, public retreat, we always have new rules in the house, I don't know if the younger <laughs> ones experience that, but after the couple's retreat, every time, we're like, oh, here we go, we all sit around the table, and it's like, no this, no that, and, you know, sometimes it would happen, and sometimes we're like, oh, it'll wear off in a week, but, uh, but no, it's true, God, you know, it was an amazing thing that God was working in their hearts and saying, hey, we're going to set some new standards and things, and Oh, one day we were around the table, and, and I won't say who, it's my business. But, uh, I was giving them a hard time. I was like, I don't want to do that. What about this? And I have this going on. And, and I remember my mom saying, I just want you to follow the Lord. And, and rules and things, and you know, maybe that you go against, they want you, the, the, you know, people in your life that want you to follow the Lord. What does that mean? She's praying for me and people that pray for you to get closer. To God. That ought to be the number one prayer request for your family members, your spouse, your children, is to get closer to God. And God will answer it. You know, there's, you know, I am here today because of faithful prayers of many of you. And my mom, I think of you know, different people that took time and, uh, you know, to help me and to uh, pray for me. And you don't understand how much it means and you don't understand how much people actually are listening, and especially when you pray for them. And God does the work on their heart when you pray for them. So pray for spiritual needs. I should have put that in the number one. That's more important than physical. But pray for spiritual needs. There is a lot of spiritual needs in our country today, in this world. And people are starting to notice that. Even I would say people who hate God realize that something is wrong and this can't last much longer. So there's a huge spiritual need that we as the church need to pray for. There's also emotional needs. There's, uh, we won't look at these uh, diversity, but it's trial and, 
anxiety and depression. Different people deal with a lot of uh, these type of things that are stressful and emotional, and we need to pray for them uh, as well. And then letter D is a financial need. If you look at Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God will supply all of your financial needs. Now, I know inflation is very high. Uh, you can take out a loan just to go to the gas station. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of things that you may be experiencing that is a new financial need. And, you know, God is going to take care of you. But you may see other people that are experiencing financial need. Uh, pray for them. But I wrote on here, uh, be willing to be the answer to somebody else's prayer. You know, God may not just put it on your heart to pray. He may put it on your heart to act. And to give and to help. And it may not just be financial. It may be going to that person and talking to them with a, a spiritual need or an emotional need. You know, God is going to call you not just to pray, but to act. So your purpose of your prayers is to help people uh, get closer to God. And then lastly here, the benefit of praying for other people. Again, I really hope that God is starting to put people on your heart that need you to pray for them. The best thing I think about praying uh, for other people is that letter A, God now handles the problem. Before you get God involved and you have problems with people, man, you're trying to do it yourself. You're trying to muster up the strength and the knowledge and the willpower to figure it out. And, you know, as a man, I like to be a problem solver, but, you know, the best way to solve problems is to go to God and ask him what he wants to be done. So God handles the problem. Don't complain about people. Pray about them. You know, a lot of, let's just be honest, a lot of problems come from other people. We're sinful and they're sinful. And when, when two sinful people get together, the problems happen. Pray for those people. Pray for yourself. Ask God to fix it. Ask God to show you what he wants you to do. The Bible says, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. So do your part. Pray and ask God to help you. Let her be here. God can do a great work. Before prayer is involved, God is not involved. And I don't mean he's not involved like he's not going to help. He is going to help. But when you get prayer involved, when you ask God to do something, it's when God answers. God does impossible things for people. Through people who pray impossible prayers. Uh, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. And I guarantee if you haven't seen great and mighty things, it's because you're not praying great and mighty prayers. God wants to do that. That's his word. I mean, as sure as I am standing here, God wants to do great and mighty things. And we've seen some great and mighty things happening in our church. And, you know, it's an amazing thing that, again, we talked about last week with, you know, Teenagers giving testimony. We had people saved and people raising their hands to be in ministry at the Harvest Rally. And I've seen God do great and mighty things, but it's not just me doing anything. It's the prayers of you, the prayers of me. I think of me and uh, Pastor Jimmy just praying before. And anytime we'd have a meeting, man, we would also have a prayer meeting. We would ask God to do something great. I'm telling you, prayer gets God involved. So don't be afraid. Don't be timid about it. Man, pray something impossible for God to do. God can do anything. You know, this doesn't take away from the little things that you can pray for. God, I just need help with this one little problem, and God can help you with that as well. Prayers are the start to the means of the work of the ministry. So prayer is the starting point. It's not, oh, everything else fails, let's ask God. No, start with prayer. God, I have this problem, I have this situation. Give me the, uh, the means to do it. Everything is done through prayer. You know, I, I, man, I was putting this message together. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to talk about the examples throughout the Bible of people who prayed for other people. There's just so many of them. We would be here all night. I think of Moses, man, he interceded for the whole nation of Israel. And God said, hey, I'm not going to do that evil. I'm not going to do all these consequences to you. Why? Because the one person that prayed to God. If there's just one of us here, if all of us here pray to God, imagine what we can do or what God can do when we get him involved. You know, I think of Jesus who said to Peter, I have prayed for you. Well, guess what? Peter failed and he denied him. But after that, what happened? He started, he had the day of Pentecost and he was a, a great apostle for Christ. And he wrote some of the Bible and he did all these things that somebody, the Lord Jesus, was praying for him. So the work of God can be done through Christians who pray. And then lastly here is God is glorified. You know, God created us to bring him glory. He didn't create us because he was bored and needed something to do. He didn't create us because he was lonely. He created us out of his love, the perfect triune love of the Trinity. Out of the outpouring of that, he wanted to share that with his creation. He does that so we can now love him back and glorify him. 
bringing glory to God must start with prayer. Prayer is talking to God to bring out the work of God to bring glory to God. Let me say that one more time. Prayer is talking to God to bring about the work of God to bring glory to God. If you want to bring glory to God, I'm sure we all would. Or if you know, you're here at church and you're trying to worship God and bring glory to God, well, pray to God and he'll show you what he wants you to do and then follow it. People will know if you actually pray and talk to God. You know, there's you know, people here that I know if, and when I was younger and I here even in college that they would text me and say, hey, I'm praying for you or they send me a card and you know, different things like that. People will know those who talk to God. When people need something done, when people need somebody to pray for them, do they call you? Do they talk to you? Do they say, hey, can you pray with me? People will know if you're a prayer. Your spouse will definitely know. Your family will know if you pray. So in conclusion, who are you praying for? And I hope tonight, again, I know it's a message on prayer which you've heard before, but I beg you, I plead with you, make a list praying for other people. There are, again, there are people who nobody's praying for that God has put on your heart to pray for them. And if you don't pray for them, who is going to? We have, who have you stopped praying for? You think about unsaved family members. You think about neighbors. You think about, uh, you know, just co-workers. Who have you stopped praying for? Who has God trusted in your care that you need to pray for more? Your family, your school of the Christian school we have here, in the ministries that you're involved in, whether you're a Sunday school teacher or a children's church helper, bless God for you. Um, if you're an usher, man, it, it doesn't matter if you're a choir member, who are you praying for in your ministry? You know, that God has placed you in that to make a difference, to be a light, to, to, you know, the reason that you're there is to bring glory to God, but to pray uh, with that group of Christians. If you don't pray, who will? If you don't pray, who will? And you say, oh, the person next to me, what, what if they're thinking the same thing? Pray to God, talk to God. There are so many problems in this world. We know that, but we can't just talk about them. We have to pray about them. Bring them to God who's going to solve them. Some people have no one praying for them, and some of that is our fault. Some of it is our fault that there's people out there that nobody's praying for. I think of, you know, I always think of my neighbors that we talk to, we're friendly with, but they don't know God, and we haven't told them about God. And yes, you know, we pray for them when I think about it, but maybe God wants you to pray even more, and pray every day, and, and bring them to the throne. Pray for a door of utterance that you can spread the gospel to them. Who is God putting on your heart to pray for? God gives us access to Him to help others. Bible says that He, I always miss it. Hebrews chapter, I think it's 4, it talks about to pray, uh, that you may boldly approach the throne to pray. Again, I'll mess it up, but it's, uh, at the end of the verse, it's pray to help in time of need. Meaning that when you need God, He is always there. You know, people are going to let you down. You may need to call and say, oh, I need, uh, I need help. You call somebody, call Pastor Anthony. I may not have my call on me, and I'll let you down, and you may have put it against me. But you can always talk to God. The 24-7 self-service that is always there. Uh, again, we don't, you know, sometimes you have a you have your phone and the service goes out. It's the worst thing ever. I remember we I would talk on the phone, not while I'm driving. Well, I got pulled over for it, so sometimes. But I would travel home from college very late, very tired. And my dear wife would call me. She's not my wife at the time, but she, just to help me stay awake. And sometimes there's a dead spot. And if you've driven on Route 70, you know where it is. It's right after that other road meets it. And right after the Wawa, I don't know where it was well. I know landmarks. But where there's that fork in the road, and then you lose your cell service and you can't talk anymore. And that was the time I put the window down, put the music up to try to stay awake. And man, I was tired, but I lost the service. And it was terrible because I could no longer talk to my dear wife. And it was so sad. Uh, but realize that that never will happen to you as a Christian with your God. God doesn't say, oh, too many people on the line. Wait, wait 10 minutes. Again, you probably experienced that, trying to find a representative to some company. That will never happen to you and your God. God is always ready to talk to you, always wanting to talk to you, ready to answer you, and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. So Amen. please, pray to God. Others need you to. Others need you to pray for them. You say, I need prayer. Well, hopefully God puts it on somebody's heart to pray for you. And I guarantee you, God will. And again, you can talk about praying for yourself. Pray for your own needs. God wants to hear them as well. So in conclusion, I just want you to make a list. Maybe now, during, maybe during the invitation time, you want to sit and pray and talk to God and make a list. Or just jot, jot down a few names of somebody God has put in your life that you need to pray for. 
The point is not to pray names. The point is to go to God and ask for help on their behalf. You know, a lot of times, again, and I'm closing, I'm done. But a lot of times, I'll make a list, and sometimes it hurts me. Because I'll just like, oh, I pray for this person, one, two, and we're done. And, and again, I, I, after I wrote this, I said, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to keep a journal. I've done that in the past, but, you know, sometimes you forget. A lot of times, I'll, I'll have a big list on my phone. And anytime somebody says, oh, pray for this, I'll just add it, so that way I have it. But don't just pray for the names. Oh, God bless this person. God, you know, help them with this, help them with that. You know, pray specifically that God is going to help them. If they're not saved, pray specifically that God is going to save them. Pray that they draw closer to God. Pray that they get right with God. Pray that they read their Bible. Pray that they pray more. We're praying for other people to make a difference in their lives. Because you can't do it. But God can. And pray and get God involved. Let's pray. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your love. And I thank you for all that you do. For us, and God, I pray that you would help us to be people who pray for other people. And God, we need you, and I need you, and all of us here would probably raise your hand and say, hey, I need somebody to pray for me. And God, I pray that we would just uh, pray for each other. God, I pray if someone here is dealing with something specific, something, uh, a heavy trial, that they really do need pray, prayer for it. They would come to us and myself or one of the pastors and their wives, and we would pray <laughs> with them, God, and for them. And and God, I know we have a prayer list, but God, I pray we wouldn't just look at it as a list. We would pray for our church and pray for our members and pray for our loved ones. And God, I pray that you would just give us a new burden uh, for praying for other people. God, we don't just pray to uh, you know, uh, praise you or to thank you or to confess sin. God, we need to have requests and intercede on the behalf of these people. And God, I pray for, again, anyone here, God, that needs help or has something they need prayer for, God, I pray that you put it on some of our hearts to pray for them. God, I pray if anyone here is not saved, that you would put it on their heart that they need to be saved. God, you convict them of their sin and show them that they need a Savior. And God, I pray you just do a great work in this invitation. God, I thank you for all that you do for us. I thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So we're going to stand and sing a song. God, if you want to sit where you are and pray, maybe write down a name or make a list. And you know, maybe you want to stand and pray, or just come forward and pray. Uh, just as God leads you, make uh, pray for other people. Make it an important part of your prayer life. Just have a section of that time that you pray for other people. Okay. Right, let's stand and sing. What a prayer.
Thank you, Lord, for hearing us, for answering our prayer. Lord, say thank you for this call upon you. Knowing that through the power of prayer, Lord, we can be made to stand before you. Lord, we pray that you bless us as we dismiss this evening. Lord, we ask you to speak to us and tell us in your name. Amen. All right, as we get ready to close, the chair needs to get stepped up in this section. In the back section, the metal chair gets folded up on the right. Do not put any chairs in the middle of the section. The volleyball game is complete when you need those for the benches. The staff and where they're at, we'll have a couple guys come out with chair parts to move. So you guys can just staff and where they're at in the section. <laughs>